Hello and welcome to Dishing Delights. My name is Jenica and today I'm going to make some breakfast, a delicious slow cooker soup, and make some homemade bread with you. Grab a snack, hit that like button, and let's get into it. Today I started out my morning by making some oatmeal. I have been eating oatmeal quite often lately because it's super quick, it's very filling, and it is so versatile. You can make it savory or sweet, whichever way you are feeling that day. Today I used my quick oats, it's just two parts water, one part oats, and once that water is boiling, I just simply place the oats right into the water, close the lid, turn the burner off, and in four to five minutes, they're perfectly cooked through. And now that my oats are done, I'm going to top mine with some maple syrup and some walnuts for that satisfying crunch. And because it's that time of year again, I served mine alongside some strawberries. And that is what I ate for breakfast. Breakfast on the table in under 10 minutes. You cannot beat that. I also needed to make a loaf of bread for the week. So I'm going to place the ingredients into the bread maker. This bread recipe I have been using for the last month now and I just toss the ingredients into the bread machine pan. I place the bread machine pan into the bread machine, put it on a dough cycle, and then I set it and forget it for about an hour and a half until the dough is complete. And then I'll show you what I do after that. While that bread machine is going, I am going to start tonight's dinner. I am going to start it by making a broth. I am going to add some carrots, some leftover veggie scraps that I had tossed into the freezer, and I also have a leftover ham bone from Easter. So I am going to turn that all into a delicious ham broth. Right now I am tossing all of those ingredients into the Instant Pot. I will fill that to the max fill line and then I will just hit that broth setting and the broth will be done in about an hour. And now I am going to give you a peep into some crackers I made. It didn't turn out perfect so I'll share that recipe with you, well the full recipe that I work on another time, but this really opened my eyes on how easy it is to make crackers and if you have kids this would be such a fun snack to make together with very few ingredients and there are endless recipes online. So if you do have children I would encourage you to get online and make some crackers with your kids. I will link the recipe that I kind of went off here. I didn't get it as thin as I should have. These kind of turned out like pita chips, which was absolutely fantastic. They still tasted great, probably because as you can see, I tossed on some everything bagel seasoning, and I am one of those people who will make loving everything bagel seasoning my whole personality. So now back to the dough. I am going to remove that dough from the bread machine pan and roll it out a bit into a lightly floured surface. I'm going to shape that up into the desired loaf shape. I have really found a love for making bread and trying out different techniques and such. I'm an amateur over here, so I can always get better. But I am going to oil up that pan and then I'll place the loaf into the oven after I let the oven rest for a few minutes because it's really warm from having the crackers at 450 degrees. As you can see here, those crackers turned out delicious. They're crispy on both sides. They just weren't quite the texture that I wanted. 
Now that the crackers are out of the oven, I'm going to place that loaf of bread into the oven at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. And now that broth is complete, we are going to separate all of the scraps and I'm going to place that broth into the slow cooker. I am going to take my time here and make sure that I get every last bit of that broth so I'm going to strain it as best as I can. To that broth, I'm going to take about a cup and a half of pinto beans and I'm going to add that to the slow cooker after I have rinsed them. I'm going to cook these beans in this broth for nine hours total on low. So the first five hours, I am going to just have the beans in here. And then after that, I will add in my potatoes, my corn, and my carrots. The bread is now completely baked through. It turned into a massive loaf. I absolutely loved how this turned out. I struggled a bit to get it out of its loaf pan. I was cracking myself up because I was trying so hard to be gentle with it. But unfortunately, I just am not as graceful as I wish to be. So this was my best loaf yet. My husband and I were thrilled with how it turned out. It was fantastic. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek into how delicious it looked. Also, you really need to get a bread knife if you cook bread from home. I will link this bread knife down below, but bread knives are just the bee's knees. I mean, look at that beauty. It looks amazing. And of course, you cannot make a loaf of bread without getting a slice with some butter on top. Now back to making the soup. It has been five hours. We are now going to peel those potatoes and I'm going to dice those potatoes up really fine. I like my potatoes so that I can easily pick them up with a spoon. So I am going to focus on making sure that they are perfectly diced. Once those potatoes are placed into the slow cooker, I am also going to add in a couple more veggies. So I have a drained can of corn and a drained can of carrots. I have been going through my canned vegetables, trying to make room for some produce that's going to come along this summer. Now, if you do not personally like your veggies a tad overcooked, place these in a half hour before serving. But when we eat soup, we love our vegetables pretty much cooked to death. Now I did add in some more seasonings. I added in some Italian seasoning, some salt, pepper, onion, garlic powder, and some celery seed. And then I just closed it and let it set on low for another four and a half hours. And I started this soup in the AM, but it is now 7 PM. We are getting ready for dinner. So I'm cutting up some green onions, chopping up some parsley, and I also grated up some cheddar cheese and I'm going to use all of that deliciousness to top our soups. After this was done, I served us up a few bowls. I just served mine as is. This was perfect for me. I added some parsley, I added some cheese, and I added some green onion. But my husband tends to want his soup a little bit more meaty. So for him, I had some ground venison from a previous dinner, and I ended up adding a couple tablespoons of that ground venison to the bottom of his bowl. And then I served his soup right on top of that, giving it a little bit more protein. I also topped his with some cheese and parsley, and then I realized that he did not like parsley, so I topped it with some more cheese to hide the parsley. <laughs> 
And then after that, I ended up cutting a slice of bread to go alongside this meal. And then we split that piece of bread and that was a day in my kitchen. So thank you so much for coming along. I had a lot of fun making this video, so I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload my next video. Thank you so much for watching.